Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, then I have some fun videos for you. You guys, okay, today we have, I don't know, I've just been, you know, being, having some controversial kind of videos lately. Don't really mean to be in that kind of mood, but there's a bag style that, you know, is very reminiscent of another bag style that is very popular right now that I have not even touched upon, haven't even addressed. And so let's get into the nitty gritty details. But first and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put out videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Okay, so I know, I know, I know. First of all, let's just all, if you see all of your fellow, uh, you know, amazing YouTube creators over here protecting themselves, we're just doing that, so everything I say in this video is completely alleged, it's completely just my own opinion, and it's totally just for fun, just for entertainment, so... Because, you know, none of us are trying to get into a lawsuit over here, and I don't even think this would be grounds for one, but anyways, there is a bag that released that a, a, a lot of people have touched upon, and I have not, because I just was like... I was just kind of taking it in, taking in the fact that... Prada, I know, I know. Our dear friends at Prada, I've never really been a Prada girly, but Prada's always had like their kind of staple styles. I think they've always really dug into their own archives, maybe even the best out of any brand, reimagined own styles and really profited heavily off of that, which I think is dope. I've never ever knocked that. And then, you know, with the rise of the Margot bag, I kind of can't believe that a designer had the chutzpah, let's say, to do such a crazy dupe, to do such a crazy, like, blatant copy of a bag that, like, seemingly kind of dropped out of nowhere. It wasn't like last season these bags were walking down the runway. I don't think it literally looks like Prada essentially like verbatim copied the row Margot bags. And again, totally just in my whole humble opinion, but it's quite obvious. And the craziest part is that the dimensions are just ever so slightly different. And of course they slapped a huge Prada logo on there, but if you were to take the Prada logo off and maybe, you know, <laughs> who, how disrespectful am I gonna get in this video? I don't know guys. And let's just go ahead and say polish up the bag a little bit it would be the Roe Margo. Like, there's no denying it. This is such a blatant copy that I had to sit with it for a while because I really was like, I can't, I can't believe that they did this. I cannot believe that they did this. It's not only that bag. There is another bag from Prada that again was newly released that looks oddly like another bag style from the row, the Devon bag. Again, this is why I'm making this video is where is the line? Where is the line to be drawn of what is like such an obvious dupe versus what is an inspired piece? Some designers I think are inspired by others and even make better pieces. We're gonna go over actually one that I think in my humble opinion is that but I just have to, yeah, we all have to start off with the elephant in the room that is, what is the line? Like, is there a line anymore? And I think I was so shocked by the fact that Prada like literally copied to a T the Margot. And I know that they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but yeah, again, not to say this for the like 18th time already, where is the line? Because it kind of blows my mind that these houses that are I mean, beyond any of us, like beyond any of our comprehensions, big, meaning they turn out so much money. They make so much money constantly. They're always gonna make money. They're never really gonna fall off. A house like Prada, Gucci, even though Gucci has totally fallen off, they're still probably making money. Like they might not be raking it in like they were in the heyday of the Alessandro Michele era, but there are always gonna be people who buy Gucci, who buy Prada, who buy Louis Vuitton. And it's kind of just the truth. Look at Chanel. Chanel has boomed. And yet they were, it was like a trend last year to completely bash on them. And none of the people who have bashed, again, I, totally, I'm like not coming for anybody. I'm just, this is a very general <laughs> statement. I never ever do that. But it's just, it's totally true. A lot of the people who, let's say criticize, not bash, who criticized Chanel last year for their like insane 
price increases, they've now kind of landed. They're always going to have price increases, but clearly it was a very strategic move to get them up to where Hermes is their only financial competition, at least. A lot of people who criticize that, you know, still buy it, which is totally fine because if you love what you love, you go for it. But it's just a really good example of that the brands that, you know, the brands that are in that tier, in that category, they're really never going to fall off unless something absolutely insane happens. Cough, cough. People are still buying Balenciaga. And, you know, there have been brands like Dolce & Gabbana and, and Gucci, by the way, like a lot of brands that have had major, major scandals or faux pas or just completely, absolutely, insanely, uh, let's say, offensive practices <laughs> or beliefs or like statements put out there. That's why I personally will never by Chanel again. There are a lot of things that I've learned that I did not know prior to recently, quite frankly, about Carl Lagerfeld and Coco Chanel herself that have made me completely fall off of Chanel, which again, I probably haven't talked about it all just because I don't want to like put all of that negative energy into it, but we all have our own reasons behind why we do or do not buy. And now it's just turned into a whole other video, but the point being brands like, brands to that level, to that heritage, to that insane, let's just go ahead and say machine behind them, are they really ever going to fall off? And so I think that's the principle that rubbed me the wrong way the most maybe even about this Prada, like complete copy of the Margot, again, just totally in my opinion, is that they knew, they knew that they could. They knew that they could do it. I don't know if Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen and the entire team and business team and legal team of The Row are going to sue Prada. I think that they're kind of just like above it. They probably don't care. They probably really know their own DNA enough and know how how truly ingrained their own DNA is in themselves and their brand and their design team that they probably don't care to be really honest, which is also why I think I haven't talked about it is because I don't think they have, I don't think they'll never talk about it. They know who they are. And I honestly, I'm sure they got a bit of a rise out of it. Like they, I, the, the major reason other than the quality is the first <laughs> in the row for me. That's the number one reason why they're my number one favorite brand and why I have the most amount of bags in my entire collection from them is the insanely incredible quality that I think they charge very appropriate pricing for, quite frankly, especially most, mostly compared to the other brands who are charging a lot more for much less quality. I said what I said, again, I know, just totally my crazy opinion. But my second favorite, maybe even neck and neck with that, my favorite part about the row is that they will always be the row. And I've talked about this at nauseam. You guys can look in all my other videos for my like total, just like real honest raw opinions on that. But the row is so them. They know themselves. They've never changed. Clearly this year, something has clicked. I, I have a lot of theories as to why, but it, I don't think it's just quiet luxury that has like really made everybody start loving the row. I think that authenticity is finally having a moment. Finally, finally, authenticity is actually like not just having a moment, but I actually think, thank God for Gen Z, authenticity is like really here to stay. I really, really think that for the first time, Gen Z is such an incredible consumer of goods in general. It doesn't have to be just be luxury goods that they're buying more vintage, they're buying more pre-loved, and they're buying into people who are actual people. That's a whole other story for a whole other day. And the exact same thing can be said for Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen and the entire team of The Row. Again, I don't know anybody personally, but I can imagine that they really look for people that just have completely authentic voices. And so they might not care. They might not care to bring that back that entire tangent. Yes, I know this is gonna be one of those rambly videos. That entire tangent was meant to say that I think that they really have been one of the brands that has stuck completely, completely, completely to their original mission statement, right? We all know the story. They just sought out to make the perfect t-shirt, the perfect t-shirt out of the most perfect materials that will fit perfectly on your body, that will be in your collection for the rest of your life. That is the row. I mean, you know, pass it along to gorgeous, incredible bags and shoes and jackets, hats, accessories, everything. Pass along to every little category. But really, when you think about it, if I just had one bag, I would choose one bag from the row, most likely, because it would be perfect for absolutely every single thing. And I could wear it for the rest of my life. But the reason why this is a why this is worthy of an entire video is because here's the most interesting part is that the row has never shied away 
from saying who they've been inspired by. But here's the interesting thing is that what Prada did was a literal copy paste. Let's change up the measurements a little bit. Let's stick our logo on it in a totally different way. Let's do it in some different colors, but kind of not really. And there you go, bing, bang, boom. Hopefully we won't get sued. What the row does, which is why it's so interesting, is because honestly, this isn't even counting like I'd, re I'd have to look very closely at this, so I will be doing that while I'm editing this, but I think lately, the past like couple years even, no bag, again, to my very knowledge right now, has been like such an obvious nod to another designer. However, the row has absolutely done some pieces that I think are personally stunning, that are like very obvious, really beautiful nods to vintage Hermes pieces. I've talked about this all the time very openly. I think one of the best examples is the lady bag by the row because here's where the positive side <laughs> comes in is that there are pieces from, let's say, vintage Hermes. It doesn't have to just be bags, but you know us, we love our bags over here. I'm sure there are so many like, archival tools that designers can kind of dig into and find incredible modes of inspiration for new pieces. And the perfect example being the lady bag by the row. Like I have said openly, it of course there's a bag by Celine, there's a vintage bag. And of course the Hermes Bolide are very similar kind of domed shapes. It's a very kind of heritage essential vintage, almost maybe antique bag style that again, I am no expert. So please like any experts do sound off down below in the comments, but here's an example of where the row just like completely honed in that style. They made it a little bit more chic. They made it a little bit more sleek. They made it a little bit more feminine maybe. They made it a little bit less busy and I love the lady bag by the row. I know it is not currently available, but if you know, you know. It just, it's the perfect example. It's the first example that I thought of, of a time when a designer clearly had some inspiration towards either a vintage style or an older piece and did it so well put their own spin on it, put their own vibe to it. And I love it when they do that. There have been count, like, let me not say countless, but there have been a lot of styles by the row that I see vintage Hermes bags in. The Clea is such a good example. I just got this archival bag from the Rose 2012 collection. This is a very obvious nod to the Hermes Kelly cut, but done in the rowified way, done in such a beautiful way. Again, totally just in my opinion. My Savette Symmetry pochette, like there's, I think that that's beautiful because trust me, in the jewelry world, like people have not been so subtle. I have found inspo pics, archival, ancient, antique, whatever, inspo images, photographs, have gone physically to museums and seen these. And I've literally just seen contemporary designers to a T copy them to a T. Like, honestly, it happens more often than you'd even understand in the jewelry world. People just will completely copy paste an antique style. And it's kind of like, it's kind of okay because nobody's making that jewelry anymore. If it's an ancient Egyptian piece of jewelry, an ancient African piece of jewelry, an ancient Irish piece of jewelry, which by the way are so cool, you know, you can't just go to a store and buy them anymore. So there are ways in which it's like, oh, that is really a good idea. Some designers are just a little bit more obvious than others. And some, I hope I'd say like myself, take a, a lot more creative freedom and add their own stamp onto antique or ancient inspired styles. And so my long story, very, very, very long, again, a very rambly video over here is that the row, I think, has always done it very tastefully. And another really good example is such an interesting thing that at a very similar, just one, it maybe even one season, but I know one year for sure, apart after Phoebe Philo for Celine released the Celine medium purse clutch, which I love. I still have on my list one day, one day, one day. I still love it so much. And the very next year or season, I have to look at the exact specifically when they actually came out, Daniel Lee for Bottega Veneta put out the pouch. Like one could say that it was inspired by the Lauren pouch for Bottega Veneta, but there, the, you know, there's a little bit of crossover, the gathered materials, it looked very similar to the Celine. And for some reason, the Celine pouch, like yes, archival, you know, lovers like us over here love that bag, but 
I don't think that bag had a major, major moment. People probably liked the class bag more and people, a lot of people I know, the trio and the classic bag, you know, everybody had all those. And I don't know if the pouch bag really had a moment. And then hello, harken back to 2020, 21, 2022, a pouch bag was that girl, okay? So it's just so interesting to see what lands. And my last example of this very, I don't know if this is a pointless video, but just more so discussion-based video so that we all can start a discussion here is Saint Laurent because I think honestly this is what sparked me wanting to do this video because Saint Laurent now has a bag I think called the Anne Marie bag speak of Celine by Phoebe Philo that is almost to a T similar to the Phoebe Philo for Celine class bag styles they're so similar and as soon I actually saw this a couple months ago at Elise Walker it might have just been when they just released and they weren't really having this hype that they're having right now where they're sold out apparently everywhere that's an example of a piece where I immediately saw it and immediately said Phoebe Philo and then I looked at it and I've seen it around and I'm like you know what it does look a lot like the Phoebe Philo bags it's kind of like a mix between the mini clasp and the shoulder clasp but then when you think about it you're like well Phoebe Fowler's not designing for Celine anymore. She has her own line. Yes, she has a really cool version of a class bag that harkens back to her own style, but it's different. She added her own thing. She took a couple of elements away. She added a couple of elements. And so you can't go out and buy a class bag new from a store. You can certainly buy them pre-loved, which I love. And that's where my gut goes is, why don't you just buy a pre-loved one? But then I, I really took time. I humbled myself and said, okay, not everybody thinks like me. Not everybody wants to jump to the pre-loved market first, even though I love that. And clearly so many of you guys do too. And it's just really a great way to be sustainable and also save a lot of money. Luxury is actually approachable that way. I've seen the class bags go for insane amazing prices especially recently for some reason the mini class bag specifically the class bag that I have the large one you know she still is an archival level girl so those are going in the thousands but I've seen the mini ones go for hundreds and after I humbled myself I said this is a beautiful bag it's a beautiful bag it's different it's a little bit different they definitely put the Saint Laurent spin on it but it's really beautiful and I have to admit that it's a really cool vinyl-y finish. The colors are really cool. There's ones that are like almost marbled in the slightest way. It's, it's very wearable. It's definitely like it's clearly having a moment or maybe will have a moment <laughs> very soon, but it's kind of really beautiful. And so that's a good example of you know what? That bag is not being produced anymore. Very similarly to how the row probably operates in their design meetings. Like when they're inspired by a vintage RMS piece, it's like, you can't get this piece. You know what I mean? Like you could have a personal shopper or if you're like me and just spend way too much time online searching, embarrassing, I know, like sure you could find one, but you can't just go get one from store. And oftentimes, you know, these designers do have a really beautiful way of just like modernizing a bag. And so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. The new Saint Laurent class bag, I think is really beautiful. At first I kind of was hating on it, so I haven't talked about it yet. <laughs> But then I realized it's not being sold anymore. It's totally might be a nod to Phoebe Philo, but also a class bag style. Like, hello, I have one from the 1930s that is original. It's a very old style bag. And so who knows, but it's really, I think my favorite, my point of this whole thing is that whether it's is fine jewelry or ready to wear or couture, I think it's so beautiful when designers are inspired by, you know, pieces that came before, just pieces that they love so much and maybe even had in their own wardrobes. It's a beautiful thing because that's art. Do you know what I mean? Like clearly I have very obvious like inspirations in my own art and the way I design a home, but I try to put my own spin on it. And that is where where the magic comes from. So honestly, I will never hate again on designers who are inspired by pieces that they love or once loved or once owned. But I do think that there is a line. I think that there's a line between something that is so blatantly obvious and something that is a really beautiful like bow down nod because that seems really complimentary. It seems like a beautiful form of flattery. But when you're just literally saying copy paste, that's where I think things get very ugly. And you guys, that has been my probably very, very, very long winded video on where is the line between inspiration and duplicate, okay? I am dying to hear your thoughts. Again, everything in this video is totally just my opinion, totally just alleged, completely just my own very novice opinion. And so I honestly cannot wait to hear yours down below. And as always, I'm so grateful for you guys watching and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye guys.